Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. Do you ever get hit with that sense of despair that leaves you feeling frustrated, wondering why you ever bothered picking up the camera in the first place? Well, if you do, you're not alone. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. So the first one is gear. And I suppose this is a trend that's been happening for a while. And I actually think it's going to a place really that's slightly more positive. Now we all love cameras and there's really nothing wrong with talking about them because there are tools, aren't they? And But the power of marketing undertaken by camera manufacturers has meant that gear and technical aspects now almost entirely dominate the conversation around photography. We've had these cameras pushed on us and we've been made to think we need to upgrade over and over and over again. If you're just doing photos though, this 15 year old Canon 5D Mark II will still do a job to an incredible level. The pictures you're seeing are taken with this. Now I watch a lot of guitar channels on YouTube and they're often showing off the latest and greatest guitars, but it feels more authentic somehow because then a really skilled guitarist comes along and actually plays it, reacts to it, and can you can really see if they like it or not. It's where I think camera reviews have become really stale over the last few years, where half the time, if the person takes a shot at all, it's either a silly snapshot or a chart. I sympathize though, because the thing with cameras is we're getting to the point now where for a reasonable price, they do absolutely everything. It's gonna be interesting to see what companies like Canon do with their marketing moving forwards because what specs are there left to improve? I get emails almost every day from companies offering me some good money to tell you about their products, which 90% of the time is just cheap plastic crap with zero genuine value. And it's almost certainly destined to be on a landfill within a year. It's not sustainable. I actually think the companies that make photography gear have got a real problem because they can't just keep making products that solve problems that don't exist. Anti-fog solution for your lenses, anyone? <laughs> I'm hopeful because I think the industry is ripe for disruption that takes it into a more positive place where the focus is on story, the art, the actual photography. And we can all start talking about something more interesting than the f-stop of our lens. And also, if you're unlucky enough to come across a gear snob who is acting like some kind of gatekeeper, just tell them to off or ignore them. Those people are lost. If you watch these videos, and especially if you comment, I'm paying attention to you and I hear what you have to say. And recently I'm seeing that a lot of you are feeling deeply exhausted by the negativity and general shittiness of social media. It's not just the trolls either. I've talked before on videos about the problems with photography on Instagram and YouTube and the effects algorithms have on us. They're not designed to help you. They're not designed to bring you a great user experience. They're not designed to get your photos and videos in front of the best audience. All they're designed to do is feed you the most clickable videos or pictures that will generate the most ad revenue for the company. It's become very obvious to me over the last few years that content is no longer king whilst an ad-driven revenue model exists. The thumbnail or headline is by far the biggest generator of clicks. And this is, I think, slowly but surely eroding quality. A little while ago, I decided I had to work much harder on my thumbnails and start trying to essentially hide quality content inside a slightly sketchy, click baity title, a bit like this one. It still doesn't always work though. And on the last video, I absolutely poured my heart and soul into that thing. And the comments were amazing. Uh, I could also see in the analytics that when people watched it, they watched all the way through, but the algorithm still killed it because not enough people clicked immediately. It feels like a bit like playing a game where you don't know the rules and don't know how to win. But we're all operating within the confines of these systems. And until we become comfortable with paying content creators, writers, musicians, or photographers directly, nothing is going to change. Instagram's even worse. And as a user, I literally never go in there anymore. So 
I don't even want to talk about it. Twitter is probably the only one that can really even be classified uh, as social. I've been actually enjoying the interactions on there recently, and I'm also discovering some great new photographers. There are trolls out there, though, there's no doubt. But like I said on the last video, they are stuck on that hamster wheel too, feeling powerless in this weird world. So they're best approached with compassion and understanding, especially when we might disagree. Probably the most valuable thing I've learned over the last few years is that social media will not bring you any sense of validation, no matter how many followers or subscribers you get. Even if you do something that goes viral, it'll be fun for a while, but it won't last. We have to get our sense of meaning and fulfillment from something more tangible and real, like our connection to nature or to family or to friends. Probably the most annoying trend in photography at the moment is, you've guessed it, the NFT space. Now, what are NFTs? It stands for non-fungible token, and they're essentially a digital token that represents that you own something in the digital world. Now, this is secured and verified by a blockchain like Ethereum. You essentially pay using a cryptocurrency linked to that blockchain, and in this case, that's Ether or ETH. They first got my attention a couple of years ago because they started being used by digital artists to sell their images as a one of one where you essentially buy the JPEG. Now, this can still be copied digitally by anyone, but you own the NFT. Now, if this sounds incomprehensible, it's partly designed to be like that. And even if you think it sounds stupid, NFTs are now trading for thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. It took me down a rabbit hole because I was very attracted to the narrative that it empowers artists and giving more people the ability to potentially make a living from creating art is something that I think would be amazing. Also, if the buyer then sells the NFT, the original artist gets a percentage of the sale because it's all managed, managed automatically by what's called a smart contract on the blockchain. And again, that's appealing. What this has led to though, is one of the biggest money grabs and gold rushes I can ever remember seeing with this cult-like culture erupting on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, there's simply no way you will not have seen uh, photographers constantly and shamelessly shilling their NFTs. It's really tiring because these posts virtually offer no value whatsoever. After doing a lot of research and minting a couple to get some skin in the game, I decided against selling NFTs because I just couldn't be sure that I wasn't scamming people. It has so many traits of a Ponzi scheme and I also have numerous concerns about the technology, which I detailed in a recent Twitter thread. I'm not gonna get into it here because it's complicated and would take way too long, but go and check that out. If you are considering getting into NFTs though, I would implore you to read my Twitter thread, learn about the governance of Ethereum, the fact it's not decentralized, and then it's likely a bubble that will burst and the VCs and founders will walk away with billions of your dollars. Or worse, you inadvertently scam some poor sucker who buys your JPEG for thousands of dollars because they think it's gonna make them rich. Before we go criticizing though, I also think it's really important to get educated because we don't want to vilify our fellow photographers. We're ultimately on the same team. Before we move on to the next one though, as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now Squarespace is just the best place for photographers to create their website. I've used them for years and I absolutely love it, uh, mainly because it's just so easy and it didn't take up a load of my time and you don't need any great technical knowledge to be able to put it together. It's just choosing one of their templates, putting some of your pictures on there, dragging a few bits around, a little bit of your text and you've got a beautiful looking website that's gonna be unique to you. I think it's also just a great place to showcase your work. It's a place that you're in control. You can show it how you want. And then if you want to, you can upgrade it to an online store and start selling things like prints, like I've done recently with my Continuum series. Again, it's so easy to do. They've got award-winning customer service. So yeah, go and check them out. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today, or you can use the link down below. Then when you like what you've put together, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Another 
Another annoying trend is the introduction of AI into photography with the use of programs like Luminar. At the moment, these programs do relatively trivial things like replace skies, touch up skin, sharpen images and increase resolution. These things won't have a massive effect currently, but we're talking about trends today and I'm wholly concerned about the impact AI generally is going to have and I'm sure you are too. Why don't they just stop them then? The problem is, is that technology as a whole is deflationary. So there are huge incentives because it cuts costs and increases profits. For example, it used to cost several pounds to send a letter around the world that needed numerous people, planes, trains, automobiles, and time and money to get it to the destination. Then email came along and we could basically do it for free and immediately. And we all benefited from that. This deflationary nature of technology costs jobs though, and AI is gonna take this a step further and start cannibalizing roles across the entire spectrum of work. With photography, I seriously think AI will eventually be able to take pictures better than we can. In many cases, it already does a better job editing. So what does this mean for us as AI enters the art world? Are you gonna value a painting, song, or photograph made by a machine it's probably scary and things are definitely going to continue to change. But I do think there's some hope and that hope is story, your story, the connections and experiences we all share or can relate to. It's why art evolved in the first place, to communicate ideas and feelings, to entertain and delight, to challenge or represent culture and address the human experience. And this, I hope, is something AI will never be able to replicate. It's either that or we get computers put in our brain. As we wake up to the lies, the dishonesty, and the corruption we see on the TV every day, the lack of authenticity becomes increasingly annoying and it creeps into the photography space too. It's actually quite difficult to be authentic sometimes because it requires us to have a level of self-awareness and uh, a sort of an understanding of our own intentions. And that's easier said than done. I'll give you a few examples that annoy me. Number one is asking insincere questions just to boost engagement. Adobe are absolute masters of this. You should go out, go and check out their um, Photoshop and Lightroom Twitter accounts uh, and you'll soon see what I mean. Number two is lying just generally. Number three is representing opinion as fact. It's a bit like allowing us to believe your AI swapped sky actually happened. Number four is people acting like gatekeepers. We've probably all been guilty of this at times. Some might even think this video is that, but questioning or being critical of a thing is essential. It's not being a gatekeeper. Being a gatekeeper is more about the display of power. Like if you're not on a list, you're not coming in. It's rife in the NFT space which is apparently decentralized, permissionless and open source. But Twitter is full of people saying they have an available invite to give away to the foundation platform. And if you want it, you have to post your picture down below and they'll decide the best one. It gives them power, control and engagement. It is not authentic. Whew. <laughs> anyway, I have two possible solutions for everything we've been talking about here. Firstly, is to surround yourself in real life with great people. Seek out truth, practice critical thinking, listen to the people you disagree with, with an open mind and generally stay curious. All that can be hard though. So if you can't be asked doing that, I've got a second option and that is to pick up your camera, go outside and make some photographs. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do now.